Hello and welcome to another exciting breakfast with Unity. I'm your host, Max Moreau, and today we're going to be playing around with Unity's new GI or Global Illumination System. So, Global Illumination is a way of calculating bounce lighting off of objects. Um, what I mean by bounce lighting is indirect light, which happens when a light source bounces off of a object back into the world. You see this all the time. If your window's open right now, you're seeing it in your room all over the place because light's casting into your room, and some of that light is coming directly from the window, but a majority of the light where the window is not directly involved is actually bouncing off of the, the things in your room, the other objects in your room. So um, Unity supports this, and it supports it in real time with provisos. So uh, global illumination is actually a really, really tough problem, uh, and it's very computationally expensive. Um, and they found ways to basically bake some of this information in ahead of time. So let's start by creating basically a light box for us to play with. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to create a couple materials first, actually. Let's just, just start with this. We're going to just create red. I'm just going to create four materials. I'm going to do red, blue, green. What should I do for the last one? I'm going to go with yellow. So, so what we've got here is we're going to change this one to red. We're going to change this one to green. I'm using particularly garish colors so you can see the effect very clearly. Um, oh, whoops, I did red for blue, didn't I? Yep, I did. Just assume that it was in red, green, blue order instead of alphabetical order. I don't know why I made that assumption. And yellow. So, there we go. So, what we're going to do now is we're going to create some cubes. Uh, we're going to create a cube. We're going to put this at 0, 0. I'm going to make it uh, uh, 10 wide and 10 deep. And then uh, I'm going to go into the scene so we can see what we're doing here. I'm going to go ahead and create another cube. This one we're going to rotate it on one of these axes and move it to five, uh, actually, sorry, uh, five and five. So that should be at the corner. Perfect. And we'll just do this all around. So this one will be at negative five. Duplicate again. I like to actually put the numbers on the things now so it's not just the same name for everything. Uh, we'll rotate this one 90 here and we will do 5 and 0. And then we're going to do one more. Just doing Command D or Control D if you're on Windows. Um, negative 5. So, so we have a little light box here. And, um, and I'm going to go ahead and make these colors. Uh, beyond here in different places. So I'm going to do blue, I'm going to do green, yellow, and red. And we'll leave white on the bottom. So first off, um, I just want to show how this looks uh, as is. First, we're gonna I'm going to move the camera so that's actually in the box in some way. So we're going to move it into the box. Camera into the box. Thank you. And we're going to move it up a little bit. Let's make it like six, maybe uh, eight. It'll be good. And Z, we'll do negative 2.5. We'll do X, two point, nah, negative 2.5. And then we will angle it to the right by 45 degrees. That's the wrong one. Angle to the right, 45. And angle down by like 30 degrees or something. And I'm going to just move this back a little bit more so we can see all the edges. Something like that. How does that look in the scene? It looks pretty good. We can see our light box. So first off, I'm just going to um, adjust the directional light while in play mode and just show you how it looks. So this is without global illumination. Um, and we are moving through here. And you can see that... The light is, we're getting shadows, which is awesome. We've got Unity Pro shadows now all the time. And that's how we're basically shining the light through into the box. And you can see that it just lights the individual things. But nothing is taking color information or light from the objects themselves. So in order to get real-time GI, it's 
enabled by default is where it's actually enabled and disabled is in the lighting tab here. So if we go to lighting, I'm going to just leave this floating. Um, we've got pre-computed real-time GI and baked GI. Notice it says pre-computed real-time. So there's a computation that has to happen first. And because of this, you have to, any object that is going to be bouncing light off of it has to be static in the scene. It cannot be, a mo it cannot be an object that you can move around. So we're going to mark all of these cubes as static and watch as the magic happens. So as soon as we mark these as static, you'll see that there's a little bar here and it's doing, doing some of the pre-calculation. And um, as soon as this bar completes, we will see a dramatic change in render quality. All right, there it is. So um, I'm going to go ahead and make the directional light actually just a little bit stronger. We're going to make it a three. And now I'm going to hit play and show you that when we change the angle of this, you can see that we're now getting this beautiful bounce lighting off of wherever the light is. So it's on the blue, it actually is giving blue light to everywhere else in the scene. And you can see this is very clearly cover, coloring the, the, uh, the, the bottom is, is white, right? But it's, it's taking on the colors of the bouncing very nicely. It's of course affecting the other objects in the scene too. But yeah, you can see how this is, this is really incredible. It, like, it's just, I just love this stuff. Um, so, uh, so in order to get bounce lighting, you have to have static, static geometry. Um, I'm going to put an object in scene though. Let's pretend we have a player or something. Um, I'm not going to script a player up. We're just going to make a sphere and pretend that this is a dynamic object and we're going to move it around the scene. So um, I'm going to put it at zero. I don't know. Zero? Is this, where, where is zero, zero? There it is. So we've got this little sphere here. And um, I'm going to make it bigger. Let's make it like three by three by three. And let's just hit play. So if we move the light around, whoops, that's not the light, that's the sphere. If we go to the light and we move it around, you'll see that um, it is not affecting the sphere. Now we could make the sphere static and have it affected. I'm just gonna show you as a comparison to what it looks like. Um, so this will require it to do a little bit of recalculate. Every time you make a change, it just automatically does this calculation in the background if it's appropriate. So. Um, so generally, it's whenever you change static geometry or add static geometry that it does uh, this uh, processing. So now you can see if I hit play, um, oops, I'm rotating the wrong thing again. We go to the directional light and rotate it. And now we're actually getting the bounce lighting off of the sphere, which looks really, really cool. But we can't move the sphere now. Um, actually, will it even let me? Probably won't. Good, yeah, it won't. Uh, we can't move the sphere because it's static. Um, now, I mentioned that you, in order to get bouncing off of something, it needs to be baked in the scene and static. But Unity actually allows you to get light from the bounces on non-static objects using light probes. So what we can do here is we can create a, um, it's in the light menu, a light probe group. So what this looks like in the scene is it looks like a, a cube of little dots at the corners. And each of these is a probe as to the way the light is moving through the scene. And I'm just going to put one in right now. Um, we're going to add a couple more in a second, but uh, let's just put it at zero, zero, and Y of two, two. Does that look good? I'm going to put it a little higher. Just put it at like three. All right. So now if we hit play, we can actually move around our sphere. So we can we can actually move the sphere around. Now you notice the lighting is not really changing as we move the sphere around, not, not a whole lot. Um, but if we, uh, if we move the directional light around, you will see that it is taking on the bounce lighting. So this is awesome. We have an object that can be manipulated in real time and it, uh, it is being affected by the new real time global illumination system. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to add a few more light probes. Um, so this works just like the reflection probe system. As a matter of fact, I'm going to add a reflection probe to the sphere. Let's just add reflection probe, reflection probe. Let's make it a real time reflection probe. Cause I like that. Uh, where's that? So we want this to be real time and we're going to do all faces at once. And so now we'll have nice uh, re reflectivity. I'm also going to uh, create a new shader for this. Let's just uh, create a material. I didn't mean shader material. Sphere. 
and we're going to put this on our sphere. And the main reason I want to do this is I want to make this shinier so that we can see the reflection easier or smoother rather. Um, I'm going to actually make it 0.9 so, so it looks a little blurry. But now you can see that we have the, the scene reflected in there. And this uh, this probe is now on the sphere. We actually I actually didn't build it as a separate object. I just put it on the sphere. The sphere itself that works as well. Um, so, oh yeah, and we want to make this uh, every frame. So um, what we're going to do now is we're going to add some more light probe groups. And so I'm just going to duplicate and move, and you'll see that they kind of connect up. It's kind of it's kind of a weird little system. Um, I don't know exactly what's going on behind all the scenes, but uh, let's do negative four. Uh, let's go ahead and create another light probe group and put it at four. And so now if, uh, so which, which direction is that? That's the Z direction, right? Yep. Yeah. So now if we hit play, you can see that if we move the sphere, um, I'm going to try and get a really bright light on the directional going on right now. Um, let's do that greenish. Let's do right there. So if we move the sphere along the X, we haven't really added probes along the X position. So the lighting on the sphere doesn't really change that much. But if we move it along the Z axis, uh, it's hard to tell in either case, but it, you can see that it is darkening as we get closer in there. Um, that's interesting. It's actually affecting lighting on the objects as well. Wasn't expecting that. That's cool. Maybe I'm not entirely right about how the bounce stuff works. That's awesome. All right. Um, so we can just fill out the uh, the rest of these with uh, a few more a few more light probes. I'm not sure how expensive light probes are, so so keep that in mind. I don't like this going into the wall there. Is it not going into the wall? No, it is. Let's just go ahead and make this a three rather than a four. And let's make this one, wait, what happened there? Oh yeah, we've got, this is a brand new one. So I'm going to put this one at uh, three, zero. This is probably more light probes than we actually need, but I'm going to do this at three, zero. Yeah, negative three, zero. There we go. And where's the last one? I want to just move this one to a negative three. So now if we move the object, we might want to put some in the corners too, but if we move the object around, um, it should now update uh, lighting information just nicely. So if we go to the sphere and move it like... That's interesting. So it actually does affect... I, I was misinformed about some of that. That's really cool, actually. It does seem to have a little bit of slowdown on on updating for the surrounding stuff, but still, that's that's cool. It's a little choppy. I'm not sure. We'll we might have an episode later on how to optimize this stuff and make it look really good. But uh, but yeah, so we've got real time directional light, awesome. We've got a we've got a real time movable object that can affect uh, both its li the lighting on itself and evidently the lighting on the surrounding objects. So I'd say this is pretty freaking cool. Um, I'm just going to add uh, an animation real quick. We're just gonna I'm just gonna go. Hey, I want to animate. Yeah, we'll call it new animation. That's not, actually we'll call this um, uh, light animation, light rotation. And we will just uh, go ahead and make it 10 seconds long. So we'll just do that. Uh, this is 600 frames exactly. And um, set it to 359 at the end there. And unrecord, and theoretically, this should just create a looping animation for us of the, of the light moving through the scene. So cool. Anyway, that's the new global illumination system. Um, use this knowledge to create things that look freaking awesome because you're going to be able to. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just save scene. Uh, oh yeah, we're going to call this uh, global illumination. And we're going to put it into our 75th episode save. And I'm also going to move the directional light and light position files these were made when we made the animations this is the animation 
sorry, said to looping, and this is the uh, the character controller for the or the animator state machine for the rotation. So anyway, that's that's that. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play one more time just to take a look at it. Oh, it's beautiful. Let's do full screen. Look at that stuff. It's just awesome. This is one of my integrated graphics card. I'm not even using the, the high end stuff here. And yet I'm sure that well actually I'm not sure about the stats right now because I'm also yeah, I usually get about 200 frames per second, but I'm also broadcasting this, so. So, sweet sweetness. And good, you didn't crash. I was worried for, for a second there. So, your project. Thank you very much for uh, watching. If you have any questions, please email me, pushypixels at pushypixels.com. You can also tweet me at Drakfire. That's D-R-A-K-F-Y-R-E. Um... If you can, please support us on Patreon. Uh, it is patreon.com slash cookingwithunity. We appreciate your support. Thank you very much, and you guys have a great one. And I will catch you tonight with another episode of Scape at 8.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. See ya!